But I want you to go to Genesis 26, and I want to show you something. Just before we go to Holy Communion, I really feel like the Lord spoke to me about two weeks ago, maybe two and a, about two and a half weeks ago, out of the Scripture. And all of these years of filling this pulpit and the pulpits across America, I had never preached on this thing that popped out at me from Genesis 26. And the Holy Spirit just spoke so clearly and so profoundly to me. The Bible said in Genesis 26 there was a great famine. Verse 1, it said famine was in the land, and it was a great famine. And in the midst of the famine, the Lord appeared. Come on, somebody. In the midst of your famine, God's going to show up. In, you, you, when you understand Isaac, the promised seed, the blessed of God, the chosen of the Lord, was in the midst of a famine. Some people get the idea if they're going through a problem, they must have sinned. I want to tell you, if you're going through a problem, you're probably right in the will of God. Come on, talk to me in the house. If you're doing what God told you to do, you're probably walking right in the will of God. Are you listening? Because the famine came in the land where Isaac was. Now watch this carefully. Isaac thought about moving out. But the Lord said, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Don't be moving Unless I tell you to move. Hello, church. Verse 3 said, Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. Look at your neighbor and say, God's going to bless you right where you're at. See, some of you think you got to make all these geographical changes. God's saying He's going to bless you right where you're at. He said, don't move. Don't move. I am going to bless you right where you're at. Look what he said. He said, I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Somebody say covenant. We are covenant people. Look at your neighbor and say you're under the blood covenant. The blood of Jesus cut a covenant that brings blessings to our lives. God spoke it to Abraham. But He also said in Galatians 3.29, If you're born again, you are a seed of Abraham. Somebody say, I am a seed of Abraham. Now, you got to understand as a seed of Abraham... You will be blessed. Somebody say, I'm going to be blessed. Not even going to sweat. Some of you are about to quit toiling and start walking in faith. Some of you are about to take a step beyond where you've ever been. Are you listening? Notice what he says. Let's read on. Verse 4. He said, and I will make thy seed to multiply in the land of famine, in the land of setback. I'm going to cause your seed to multiply. Go on over with me to verse number 12. Then, somebody say then, then. after God spoke to him, after God established who he was, in that famine, then, verse 12, Isaac sowed in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Now look at me carefully. God is going to bless you this year. God is going to bless you this year, not next year, this year. Somebody say, I'm a receiver. Come on, say it with authority. I'm a receiver. 
The Bible said, and Isaac waxed great and went forward. Somebody say, I'm moving forward. And grew until he became very great. Look at your neighbor and say, do you really know who you're sitting by? See, when God makes covenant with you, you're going to grow. And you're going to grow. And you're going to grow. And you will become very great as an influencer in the kingdom. Somebody say, I'm ready. Now watch this carefully. Watch this carefully. Isaac had possessions of flocks possessions of herds, and great store of servants. Somebody say employees. And the Philistines envied him. Somebody say, I'm about to get blessed in such a measure the world is going to envy me. Just check and see how many believers we got. God is going to bless you until the enemy takes note. Look at verse 19. The Bible said, An Isaac's servant digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Somebody say a lifetime blessing. Now, here's what the Lord said to me. I'm not going to let them just taste and go back. I'm going to let them taste a lifetime blessing. I wish I had some receivers in the house. Now, when God starts blessing you, the enemy will get mad. Look with me just a little further. And the herdsmen of Gigar did strive with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And Isaac called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. On your little notes, I want to give it to you quickly. His first well that he dug was called Esek, are contention and strife. Somebody say contention and strife. Say it again. Contention and strife. When you start advancing, somebody's going to try to get in strife with you. Everybody's not going to be happy because your children get saved. Because your household gets blessed. Because God brings provision and you're out of debt. Notice what Isaac did. When that happened, verse 21, they digged another well. Say, if you think you're going to stop me with getting all this junk stirred up, they digged another well. And strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna, or on your notes, accusations. Sitna in the Hebrew means accusations. So here's what the devil does. Soon as you make a movement in the right direction, he'll start accusing you. He'll accuse you of sins that's under the blood. He'll accuse you of all kinds of garbage you got to stand up and say, oh no, I'm free. I'm free. Revelation said, Satan is an accuser of the brethren. Come on, talk to me somebody. So, look what happened. So when they stirred all that up, verse 22. And he removed from thence and digged another well. Somebody say another well. For they that strove not, and he called the name of it, Rehoboth, and said, For now the Lord hath made room for us. We shall be fruitful 
in this land. His third well was called Rehoboth, or a well of blessing, of room, and of overflow. Somebody say overflow. you got to understand, God is not going to let the enemy stop you from the blessing. God said every time some of you right here in this room, you're going to relate to what the Holy Spirit said. Every time you make movement toward God, the enemy tries to rear up and stop you. Got word for you. He's not going to stop you this time. I say he's not going to stop you this time. Let's read just a little bit further. The Bible said in verse 33 and 32 that they digged another well. And he called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. Now the name of this well was representative of completion. Somebody say completion. Philippians 1, 6 says, if he starts it, he'll finish it. That means got something started in your life. Some of you got it started today. God will finish what he started. And the Bible says that Isaac lived in peace the rest of his days. You know what's about to happen to you? Peace like you've never tasted for the rest of your days. Peace is shalom. Peace is wholeness. Peace is nothing missing. Nothing broken. Prosperity. Somebody say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Now just before we share communion, listen to the Lord. He did all of this by covenant. He had made a covenant with Abraham. God said, Jesus made a covenant with you, and he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. I want those servants to go and help Deacon Bradford to get ready to serve us communion. Listen carefully to me. Just one more word that I want to deposit in your heart. What used to be hard is going to become easy. What used to be difficult God is going before you, making crooked paths straight. You're about to see the hand of the Most High God. Somebody say, I'm ready to receive everything that the covenant of God has promised me. Close your eyes, slip your hands up, and say, Lord, I'm ready to totally fulfill why I live, for my purpose to be fulfilled, I give myself to you. Here I am, Lord, standing by grace, standing by mercy, and I thank you for it. Thank you for what you've done in my heart and what you're about to do in my life and my family. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.